You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Good morning, good afternoon, good day. Wherever you are, wherever you're listening, guess what? I am grateful for you. Thank you, sir, ma'am, man, ma'am. Whatever you are, it doesn't matter. I treat you the same anyway. Just grateful for you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for sending in those questions. Askdroney.com. That uh, that hopper is getting full again, and uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, today's show, I'm hoping really uh, provides some value to you because we've learned some nitty gritty details that uh, there's a, there's a big opportunity right now, and we want you to go take advantage of it because those of you who have uh, supported us through thick and thin. We're really here for you, and uh, you're not going to want to miss today's show because we're going to give you uh, some really killer information on how to take advantage of this opportunity. So thanks again for joining us. My name is Paul. My name is Rob, and uh, super glad to be here with you, and as always, very thankful for all of you that are out there listening. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Today's question, we're just going to get right into it. Today's question is brought to you by, well, many of you know DroneU. You know the bald-headed bureau, and you know my mercurial self, and you know that DroneU is the largest library for online courses relating to drones different ways of turning your toy into a tool and the ultimate means of learning operations. That way you can scale your drone business. But a lot of you do not know about our new program called Props. Props was built for drone teams. It's built to make the life of managers much, much easier. Props was built to manage numerous pilots within numerous different training verticals. This way managers can know who's caught the bug who's struggling and where, and are pilots really proficient or are they just current? If you are involved in a drone team or you're scaling up your own drone business, I recommend that you check out the Props program. Go to propsflightschool.com and you can request a demo to check out just how different this augmented reality scenario-based system truly is. Because I think you'll find, like most of the people, that it's an extremely useful, useful program to manage numerous pilots, to get them in the right content, and to realize if they're the right fit for the job, but also to help them and coach them along the way. We know there are numerous ways that drone programs can fail, and we make it a lot harder to fail. How? Because we make it easier for managers to manage these programs with props. Check it out yourself, propsflightschool.com, and schedule a demo. That's right, because we haven't launched it yet, even though I said I was going to launch it, but I haven't launched it yet. <laughs> um, because frankly, uh, we've been onboarding clients left and right. So uh, we haven't launched the marketing because it's been going so well. I know that sounds wild, but it's uh, it's true. So that said, check it out. If you love what you've seen at DroneU, go a little deeper. Take a step-by-step, hold-your-hand course with quizzes based in the real world. I have a feeling that even those of you who are single DSPs will take a look at props and be like, wow. I only say that because most of our clients have. Anyway, um, also very happy to announce our two newest members of the flight crew. It's been a while, and we might even tease it a long time ago. Uh, John Wakey, Mike Ball, proud to have you on the team. Thank you very much. Uh, Mm -hmm. And uh, just excited for all the things that are going on here. I really, really, really am. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's get into today's show. So we said that we had a question. Actually, we're not going to play a question today. Why? We got a question in, right, Rob, from... uh, We did? Talking about... Bob. Nighttime operations, asking for updates on nighttime operations. And uh, I wanted to write an article about this, and I'll probably still do it, Um, but I thought it was just a super, super important show to talk about the opportunity right now with Part 107. So many of you know we are in a transition period with Part 107, right? Right. In this transition, we've got some great opportunities, right? We, with the new Part 107 being implemented 45 days from the Federal Register publication of the updates, so mid-March essentially is when we're going into effect, you will no longer need a nighttime waiver to fly at night. Whoa, 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 pump the brakes. You can't fly at night, according to the FAA, until you go through the recurrent training. Hmm. Okay, so that's an important thing. But 
Where is this opportunity? Well, we know that the Part 107 test is changing in mid-March, right? We know that we're going to have a larger question pool. We're going to have new questions and we're going to have new specific content about things like nighttime illusions, physiology, lighting requirements, etc. And so this is where the opportunity is. Are you a photographer? Are you a videographer? Are you an event planner? Are you a wedding photographer? Have you been thinking about getting your FAA drone certificate, your part 107 certificate, the golden ticket to make money with your drone. I know a lot of people get away with not having a 107 and making money. But as remote ID gets implemented, the propensity to get away with that is almost eliminated. So please be aware that those people's times uh, is it's coming to an end. That said, if you've been thinking about getting your 107 certificate, now is the time. Because pretty much between now and mid-March, you're going to be able to take the easier Part 107 test. And instead of filing for a nighttime waiver, you can then take the recurrent training, say a month later, when it's available on the website, the FAA's website, and then now, instead of having to take the waiver, go through all the, the whatever period of time it is to have the FAA get back to you and then finally get approved, you can just go through the recurrent training, knock it out, and then you can f fly at night. I mean, Rob, for the next couple of weeks, maybe, maybe month, depending on when the FAA actually drops the new test, mm -hmm. there's a huge opportunity right now to take the easier version of the test, but have more uh, rights as a drone pilot in the months to come, a big, big thing to just, uh, the, I, the, one of the biggest caveats, I don't want to get confused here, is that you cannot fly at night without a waiver until you go through the updated recurrent training or take the new test, okay? Mm -hmm. So if, again, if you're thinking about getting your part 107, I know Rob is right now. I know a couple of our other friends here in Albuquerque are. Right now is the time to go do it. The test is going to be a lot easier, buddy. I mean, you you, you got uh, it's going to be a lot oh. easier. <laughs> yeah, oh, yes, I hear you. And then once you get your 107, <laughs> it's even easier to then fly at night because all you got to do is go through some PowerPoint and click yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Now, you are the pilot in command. You do have the ultimate responsibility. You are supposed to know that content through and through. Don't forget that. I'm just kind of making a YouTube media joke here about, you know, just going through the content. I say that because I've written the article, right? Get your part 107 or learn to fly. Why did I say that? Because the FAA never has and never will teach you how to fly. They never have. Now, no, you know it's what? not their purview. Exactly. And that's, and that's okay. A lot of people don't agree with what you just said, but it's mostly newer pilots who kind of getting into the gist of things. A lot of people don't agree that the sky is blue either. Woof. Woof. Anyways. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> on that bombshell. Uh... So anyways, you know, I was actually thinking about maybe we should do some sort of a, an offer for people to hop in really quick and, and join Drone U so they could get access to our Part 107 materials and pass. And I thought we're so stinking reasonably cost uh, priced as it is. Yeah, I think it's already a deal in itself. Yes. So, me. Um, for 47 bucks for a full 30 days, someone could come in, take the test be done, mm -hmm. take advantage of what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Kind of a no-brainer. And learn how to fly, right? All those other fly, all yes. those other places where you can learn Part 107, they offer great, great stuff. They've got great marketing. It's way better than our marketing. But you won't find better content there. You know why? Because those people don't actually fly drones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 they don't. How could they? If you think about it, like literally. No, they might. Uh, they might fly drones. Don't forget, I two, of, two of, of those do. people were at DroneU and then copied us. So don't forget that. You know. Now that said, I don't really care about that. It's not personal. Yeah, we don't want to get into that. We're not. But here's the thing. Here's where I pride myself and why I don't worry about those people. Because I know we can teach people how to avoid crashing on a reliable and consistent basis. I know that our quality of content is going to teach you how to avoid problems in the field, gain confidence, and do things other pilots can't do. Seriously. And if you pay attention and you put the time in yourself, that's the most valuable school, in my opinion, ever. Uh, I mean, seriously. Even if you go to Udemy, right, you pay 23 bucks for Part 107, but then you're paying 40 50 60 70 80 for all those other courses. And by the time you, you take three or four courses, you've already blown past the cost of drone you. So... Uh, that's why I, like, if you ever like really do the math, it's, it's kind of funny, but I don't need to go down that path too far. I feel very uh, confident about it. 
Yeah, I, the only thing I'll add is that it is very important to us. This is a major tenet of Droney's philosophy. That is that anybody that teaches for us has done it. Yep. And they've experienced the ups and downs of earning money while doing it, right? Client mm-hmm. interaction, deliverables, meeting expectations, failing to meet expectations, fixing the failing to meet expectations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. That cannot be beat. You know, all those things you just can't learn at a university or a college because, oh, yeah, they they teach. They don't do. Um, anyway. It's funny because it, just talking about, I mean, even thinking about my university experience, counting degree, woohoo. Anyway, <laughs> um, what I learned the most from to this day, and that was a long time ago, what I remember learning the most from is case studies. That's funny because your MBA is pretty much Harvard Business School case studies like the whole way through. Yeah. That's why I'm kind of like, I need more from an MBA if I'm going to go get one. You know what I mean? Like, I want to know. Anyway, we're getting down rabbit hole. We now. are, but it's fun. And it's a short podcast yeah. because it's a pretty short uh, PSA, essentially. Yeah, right now, <laughs> right? huge opportunity. Get your 107. A lot of people ask, is it hard, Paul? No, it's not hard. If you get 90% on our quizzes, you're ready to go take the test. The biggest parts that you need to memorize are air space and weather. That is it. I mean, really, that is it. And uh, you should know how to access airspace anyway. So I think it's I think it's crucial and I think it's important. And uh, just the reason that we talk about these ancillary things here at Drone U is because we believe in what we put out because we desperately, desperately want you to succeed. And how could we have been around for so long and trained so many pilots if they haven't been successful? That said, we pride ourselves on working harder than everyone else and doing it from experience. So it's funny because I was actually just on the FAA's website yesterday and they have new new education tab, like if you're flying drones for learning and they have a new partner program and they're coming out with new rules supposedly by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And I found it really interesting because the only way that you can partner with them is if you are a school that is not for profit. And I found that really interesting not-for-profit because at the end of the day, a lot of these state-run institutions, while they may not, you know, have quote-unquote profits, what do you call their sports teams? Uh, What do you call their uh, revenue-generating Big Ten football team, right? It's just such a farce. And on top of that, if you've ever gone to an FAA symposium, the dumbest questions come from... Some I'm not going to name the colleges because I feel bad for them that they hired these people, but they come from uni- new university programs. And I mean, uh, I remember helping one university out in northern Wisconsin, um, and they essentially were like, "Hey, this is the this is the you know this is the semester long stuff that we're going to be teaching, and we got it from this college, right? And this was what a year ago, and this content that they had was from 2015, before Part 107." And it's like, how do you pay $40,000 a year to go get a degree that has its stamp of approval from the FAA, but the content's by so old, it's not relevant anymore. <laughs> I feel like K-State, you know, they called themselves Drone U once. I found, I thought that was funny, but you got to give it to K-State. They've been it for so long. The only university who's been doing it longer, New Mexico State University. Really? The number one first, the first testing and training grounds for UAVs in the United States here in New Mexico. You know, Rob, let's end this on a bombshell. Do you know where the largest no-fly zone is in the United States? In New Mexico? It's in New Mexico. (laughs) That's right. We got a whole lot of land and you can't fly a lot of it. (laughs) Well, we've got a lot of Air Force work going on. That's true. Flights going around all over New Mexico. And we're not just a missile and test range for the United States. I learned uh, Germany comes over here and does their stuff too. No kidding. And Alamogordo, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. It's an important part of our uh, economy, that's for sure. It is. I hope I made you proud and didn't talk too much crap about the competition, but it uh, it is important to me. So I I gotta admit I I didn't know that about the FAA and and that um, requirement. I just don't understand the thinking because shouldn't it be more about the best content, the best but, but it, it, material, the so best So the answer, teachers. the answer in a Keynesian capitalist economic society, the answer to your question is yes. But what the question that you just asked showcases the fundamental problem with colleges and universities right now. And I think it also showcases why this last year was like the lowest enrollment rate in like 70 years. 
because who the hell wants to pay 30, 40, 50, 60 K a year to do zoom classes? Like, uh, nobody. Exactly. Well, a few people, apparently, so, especially if mom and dad are paying. The system is broken, Rob. It's not about the best. It's about fulfilling the system at the university. And I mean, I learned that at UNM. <sighs> Instructors taught me that. They're like, oh, no, 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 Paul. No, no, no. We don't, we don't push the envelope until we're allowed to. <laughs> so, anyway, I say that. So I guess we need to start a 501c3. Um, I'm just We kidding. have been offered accreditation kidding. by numerous, numerous uh, institutions. That's a different animal than being a nonprofit, but well, anyways. And the, uh, why do I not want to be a nonprofit? I don't want to be like most other companies that lie about what they do, right? Nonprofits. <laughs> oh, no, seriously, <laughs> right? What is a nonprofit? They sure. just take all their profits and then they redistribute them through salaries for the next year. And nonprofit. Cool. Go get one. <laughs> By the way, did you notice, did you know that I'm pretty sure you can operate as a nonprofit as provisional until they say no, you can't be a nonprofit. Anyway, we're getting into the weeds. There's a huge opportunity part 107. When you do become a drone pilot, after you get your 107, the next thing to do is really focus on learning to fly. Look at the verticals that you may want to serve and think about what's the type of client you want to serve to. Don't just go for the bottom of the barrel. Don't just go for real estate. You're going to have high competition, low prices, and it's a morale murderer. Okay. A lot of people are making really good money, consistent money in construction, in uh, dirt work and moving, communications, utilities, like the, the number of applications grows and grows, which is why I'm saying this to you right now. It is important in my opinion, to try out these different verticals numerous times. Figure out what you like to do. Figure out what's going to keep challenging you because you will get bored after four or five years. Trust me, I've been there. So you got to be thinking about that, right? And think about who is the client that you want to serve. All right. We've got a great podcast about the client quadrant, but on that bombshell, Rob, I'm done yapping my trap. All right. Ask Drone You for your questions. We'd love to hear from you. It's what makes the podcast go. Appreciate it. On that a very energetic ending, thanks for joining us. My name is Paul. <laughs> it's a mellow day for Rob. <laughs> Late night DJ voice, letting you go here. <laughs> thanks for joining us. Yeah. 99.5, Drone UFM. <laughs> See you next time. Over and out. <laughs>